What's up everybody, Tutmo here, and today I wanna to talk to you about my three favorite text editors. In 2005, if you would've asked me what my favorite text editor was, I would've ranted and raved all day about Notepad++. Fast forward to 2019, Notepad++ has been surpassed by some other text editors. The top three I would pick in 2019 are Sublime Text, Adam, and Visual Studio Code. I will admit, of these three text editors, one is my favorite, and I'll tell you which one at the very end of this video. Sublime Text, it has been around for over a decade now. Yay, Sublime Text. And with that comes a lot of stuff. It has a massive package control center that allows you to really make it look however you want and feel however you want. With that comes a minor con. Setting up this particular package control thing in Sublime Text is not straightforward. It sort of uh, makes you jump through a couple of hoops. I had to do a how-to just to get it going. The next pro, I would say, for Sublime Text, it handles very large projects very, very well. It's not gonna be a stumbling block when it comes to switching over from one aspect of your project to another. The one thing with with that though comes the ever nagging pop-up box that asks you to buy the tool. That's right, Sublime Text isn't 100% free. Now it can be used endlessly, the free trial that is, but you'll get that pop-up box maybe once every few hours or so. It's not horrendously annoying, but it is always reminding you that, hey, um, we appreciate that you're using our tool, but you gotta buy it eventually. The cost for it for one seat is about 80 bucks. Not terrible, probably won't break your bank, but if you've got a bigger team, you can quickly see how the cost of that would expand. The second tool I want to talk to you about today is called Atom, A-T-O-M. It's a relatively newer text editor, and with that comes a few bumps, and I'm sure they're working on it. The first pro of Atom is the package control conversation we just talked about a second ago. As soon as you have Atom on your computer, you're up and running. You're ready to add plugins, do all kinds of cool stuff to make your text editor as customized as you need to be for whatever particular project you're working on. That's a huge plus for them. It allows people to get in there and just start using it. The second pro and probably one of the more important ones is it's developed by GitHub. Now GitHub, if you've ever used it before, is a wonderful, very well-known versioning tool that allows you to work with multiple developers, multiple contributors, branch off into different versions and bring it all back together, that kind of stuff. In Sublime Text, as we just talked about, there are ways of doing that, but they're not quite as smoothed out or polished as what Atom just has built into it itself. Here's the downside of Atom. The downside of Atom is it performs a little slow. Now, if you're working on smaller projects, you probably won't notice the difference between Sublime Text, Atom, whatever, but if you're working on bigger projects where you're navigating from one screen to another, as I mentioned for Sublime Text, the last thing you want is any lag to slow you down. It can really throw off your game. You're moving, you're grooving, you're doing your thing. The last thing you want is your text editor to be your stumbling block. It's something they're always gonna be updating and working on. I'm sure it's gonna be something that gets stripped away and if they do fix that performance, we'll call it an issue, it, I could see it surpassing Sublime Text in the coming years. Another thing it does have going for it, it's not necessarily another pro, but it is free. It's 100% free. In fact, they're not gonna be throwing a pop-up asking you to buy a full license. They're saying, hey, this is our tool. It's 100% free. If you wanna use it, go for it. Boom. You're good to go. So the little bit of lag from that regard does feel a little bit more acceptable. It's a free tool that we're able to use by the kindness of GitHub. Thank you, GitHub. Number three, the third tool I wanna to talk with you guys about is so close to my heart. Visual Studio Code. I know a lot of you are probably like, oh, come on, Visual Studio Code. Uh, have you given it a chance? That's my only question. Okay, the default setup is fantastic in my opinion. It's actually beyond a text editor and more of an IDE. Now, I know there's people out there who are selling themselves, I wanna use multiple different tools for my IDE setup, integrated development environment, which is totally fine, I get it, I really do. But if you're just trying to crank out a project, something like Visual Studio Code, putting it all in one spot when your terminal is right there with you and your debugger and your source control is just kind of all there, just sort of a breath of fresh air if the project you're working on allows you to, to put it in that type of nice packaged setup for your text editor. I will say, I will say, their extensions are a little bit lacking. Now Visual Studio Code's probably the newest of the three we're talking about today. I think it rolled out around 2015. But the default that you just start off with, you've got built-in debugging, you've got IntelliSense type ahead stuff that'll try to help you code while you're coding as long as you tell it what language you're coding in. You've got version control stuff going on right there with you. Your extensions are already set up and ready to go if you wanna add more stuff. It's pretty awesome. The reason Visual Studio kind of landed on my list today is my top three and 
dare I say, my number one. It has everything in there that you would kind of want it to have. And it scales with you. So if you're a brand new developer, hop into Visual Studio Code, and I challenge you to get lost. And you probably won't even use 90% of what's available in Visual Studio Code until you need it for some other project. But in my tutorial, actually, how to create a basic web page using HTML, CSS, and JavaScript, I used Visual Studio Code because of this one reason. It, it just can be a plain old text editor if you need it to, and it can look real pretty and be very organized. But you can use that exact same text editor later if you start needing the terminal and stuff like that. Really, really cool. So to wrap this up, I will say I've been a huge fan of Sublime Text for many years, but I must admit, Visual Studio Code stole my heart. We've been very happy together. If you've got any opinions on what I've got to say here, please leave them in the comment section below. I'd love to hear your thoughts. And if you enjoyed this video, hit that little like button. Bloop. And if you want to stay up to date on all the upcoming videos, I'll produce these weekly and I've got tutorials coming. I've got monthly updates. I've got a lot of cool stuff on the way. Subscribe. Stay updated. Why not? You know? All right, guys. Peace.